Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Will and today I want to break down Outpost Rush for you. So this is the third game mode we'll be addressing here. The first one have been being War and the second one being Corrupted Invasions. And uh, this one is actually a 20v20 PvPVE game mode. So it's kind of like two different game modes kind of smashed together in terms of some of the things to expect in the game in comparison to War and Invasion. So Outpost Rush I think is probably the most interesting, most in-depth game mode of the three of them. Being completely honest with you guys, war mode and invasion mode are kind of the same thing, really. It's just whether you're you're fending off other players, you're fending off mobs, it kind of all works the same. Survive for a half hour and the defender wins. If the attackers destroy you, the attackers win. And that's just pretty straightforward how it works. Outpost rushes have kind of a whole different beast. And uh, you kind of understand as I go through it. I'm going to break this video down into three different sections explaining to you exactly what Outpost Rush is and some couple different things to keep in mind as you're playing through the game mode. The first thing we're going to mention is this is specifically reserved for max level players. So you must be level 60 to participate in Outpost Rush. So if you're someone who's newer to the game or someone who just keeps seeing it in their faction thing, join Outpost Rush. This video will give you a good explanation for it, but you will not be able to participate to hit level 60. So I'm going to read a few things off the page here directly just to kind of simplify some stuff. And then for the most part, I'll just be describing to you as I know it to work here in the game. So first we're going to start with Outpost Rush is a 20v20 battle set in a primordial river basin filled with forgotten ancient technologies and hidden sources of Azoth. That Azoth you can then use during the game mode to upgrade and do some cool things, so keep that in mind. Players and their team will vie for control of strongholds, strategic resources, and it requires combat, prowess, and collective wits to win. So there's several different portions of this game mode that can give you a leg up over the enemy. Being able to balance these different things as well as being somewhat good at PvP combat will be very useful for this particular event. Outpost Rush can be done by yourself, so it can be up to 20 solo players, or it can be done with up to a party of five. So you can also have five parties of four potentially participating in Outpost Rush. So it, that can have a huge effect on whether your, ch your chances of victory, let's say you're all 20 solo players and they're four parties of five, you're going to have a lot harder time because of just the fact that they're way more organized. Outpost Rush is kind of like a mixture of a MOBA, as well as like Domination from Call of Duty, I guess is the best way I can describe it. And it'll make a little more sense as I show you the map and some of the different objectives and the way you score points in the game. So each each outpost has gates that can be upgraded, protective, protective wards that can be made using resources. So you can spend your resources to upgrade your fort by these protective wards like buffs or defense, things like that. And then weapons such as repeater charts and vats of oil can be added to your outpost that you control to give you some better defenses. And there's also a new thing called Command Post that can be upgraded that will also give you some different buffs throughout the game mode. Gameplay includes building cannons, so you can still build cannons to like shoot down uh, enemy turrets, things like that. Summoning circles are a very unique thing, which we'll cover here in a second. And then again, collecting Azoth to get rewards. There's two special objectives as well in the game mode. Again, that kind of gives it more of that MOBA feel. And we'll start by starting with the map. I'll explain the, out I'll explain the outposts, scoring, things like that. And... This is the actual map. It's quite big in comparison to either War or Corrupted Invasion. More or less, a Corrupted Invasion map is like this. <laughs> you know, it's just like a circle right here in the middle. Like, let's say this is the fort you're defending, and then there's like, I don't know, a couple hundred meters outside that fort you can interact with. I wouldn't say this is as big as an entire territory, but it's similar. It's more similar in scale to a territory than it is an instance for War or Invasion, for sure. This is a, quite a big area. And again, it, you get this reminiscent of laning from a MOBA. You have the three different outposts you can capture. There's this main road that leads through each of them. And then you kind of have almost like the jungle. So if you've ever played any MOBAs, League or Dota or Smite or anything like that, you have like this jungle area where there's little objectives, there's resources to gain, and there's a couple of special things at each end of this that you can do to buff yourself up or diminish the enemy team throughout the game mode here. And again, this is going to be a score-based game mode. So the team with the most points at the end of the game win the game. Plain and simple. You score points by capturing outposts, maintaining outposts, upgrading outposts, as well as two other specific things. The second portion of that is going to be your other objectives here on the map. So there's going to be summoning circles that will allow you to summon special mobs that will help defend or attack. So attackers can summon bears that will help fight or you can summon bears that will help defend, or other creatures, not just bears necessarily. And then there's also what's called the Baroness Hain. Baroness Hain is a really unique mob. This is an elite mob that you will need several people to defeat. By taking out Baroness Hain, it will actually freeze the enemy team from scoring any points. So regardless of what they're doing, they'll stop gaining points for a specified amount of time. 
allowing you to get the edge up. Again, this being a point-based game, you're focused on capturing objectives and dominating via score. Killing players, capturing forts, upgrading forts, things like that will gain you points throughout the game mode. The more points you have, the closer you are to victory. And then you also have corrupted portals, which you can spend resources on to get additional buffs. And you will notice not only will people managing the forts, making sure people aren't capturing or, or trying to capture them, there will be also be people defending the Baroness, stopping people from killing the Baroness, and so they can focus it, or the corrupted portal so they can get the buffs, or the summoning circle so they can spawn mobs. There will be different objectives to manage and maintain, as it mentions here at the top of the wiki, vying for control of strongholds as well as strategic resources, these being the strategic resources you're focusing on right here. So keep that in mind as you play this game mode. Again, far more in-depth than what you would expect from either war mode or invasion, which is more or less just a horde survival game mode. So the game mode overall is quite intense. It's quite in-depth. It can be a ton of fun. Another really important aspect to keep in mind with this particular game mode is that it doesn't work the same way as you would deal with in wars or corrupt invasions where it has an overall effect with the territory standings things like that this is just a game mode where you can focus on getting faction experience good loot gold so this is going to be focused more on just a pvp event that you can participate in to get cool loot and whatnot this is not going to shift the territory standings and things war mode and invasions do so keep that in mind this is just a for funsies mode to get some cool stuff throughout the game i'm sure there will be special loot special achievements things like that you can unlock only from outpost rush Similarly to their special dungeon loot and dungeon um, achievements, things like that. That's going to be the main focus of Outpost Rush. It's Again, let's break it down again real quick. It's going to be a 20v20 PvPVE game mode where you'll capture these objectives, capture the forts, upgrade the forts, hold the forts for as long as possible to score as many points as possible, as well as focusing on the Baroness to freeze out the other team from scoring points and taking advantage of the Corrupted Portal to get awesome buffs. And then using your summoning circles that are throughout the map to summon special mobs to help your side be more efficient so that's about it for the video guys i tried to break it down the best i can without really exposing too much of the content i really want you guys to go in and have that you know that wide-eyed bushy-tailed experience but also still be useful be able to go into the game and go okay these are my objectives i need to do these things focus on this focus on that but still seeing a lot of this stuff for the first time and kind of having those ooh and ah factors of these really cool content you can get in these different game modes so if you like the video if you like the content if it was useful Drop a like, subscribe. I'm really focusing on building the channel up here. I want to I want to get some great videos out and be able to continue to focus on um, content uh, around New World and MMOs in general. So like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.